Have you ever wanted to run your own Minecraft server but got overwhelmed by all the technical setup? What if I told you there's a way to manage your Minecraft servers through a clean, user-friendly web interface? Hey guys, what is up? It is DOS. Today I'm going to show you Crafty Controller, a tool that lets you create, manage, and monitor multiple Minecraft servers. We're going to set this up using Docker on a VPS. By the end of this tutorial, you'll know how to set up Crafty Controller, create and configure your first Minecraft server, and monitor the server performance and player activity. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and spin up a VPS using Linode, and once that is done, I will head over to the terminal and I will see you guys there. Once we are in the terminal, we are going to create a directory. So we're going to do mkdar space crafty controller. We're going to cd change directories into that folder. And then right now we have nothing in it. We're going to go ahead and do vim or use nano if you prefer nano vim space docker dash compose dot yml press enter. The exact Docker compose file that we will be using in this video as always will be in my discord link in the description. So let's go ahead and copy that paste that in. We're going to do escape and then colon WQ and then we're going to go ahead and cat that out. Now we do not have Docker installed. So if we do Docker space dash V, we do not have Docker. So we're going to need to go install that. So let's go to our browser, open up a new tab and type in Docker engine install space and then the distribution you're where you docker engine install space ubuntu or whatever distribution you're using press enter click on that first link scroll down just a little bit and copy this right here set up docker's apt repository copy that command go back to our terminal paste that in and press enter let that finish once that is done we're going to go back to our browser scroll down a little bit more and then you'll see this command right here to install the latest version, run this, here, copy that, back to our terminal, paste that in, should ask us if we want to continue, click Y, enter, and go ahead and let that finish. Once that is done, we can go ahead and confirm Docker is installed with Docker space dash V, enter. We do have Docker installed, make sure we're in the directory that we want, and now we're going to go ahead and start up the container with Docker space compose space up space dash D. D stands for detached to run it in the background and press enter. Should go ahead and pull that image and then start up the container. Should just take a couple of minutes. Once that is done, we're going to go ahead and cat our docker dash compose file. And then as you can see, there's two ports right here. This port range is specifically for the Minecraft server. And this port range is for our management uh, UI or web UI. So we're going to go ahead and copy that, which is 8443. We're going to need to get our IP, which is going to be right here for us. You get your IP with IP space A. Go to our browser, paste that IP in, colon. And then remember the port is 8. 443 press enter may not work right away i was actually expecting this if we go to the terminal and you guys see that it's still not up for you guys either go ahead and do docker psa and then docker logs and then the name of your container normally when this is still starting up you will see this wrapper right here which is one two and three you're going to wait for that to finish and then once you see all this extra text here you should be good to go if you go to the browser here make sure you guys change this to https and press enter and it should take us to the page just like that. So go ahead and click accept the risk and continue. You guys are going to want to make sure you guys put a valid SSL certificate over that. The easiest way and the way I recommend is using a reverse proxy. Again, I have a video in that in my channel if you guys want to check out how to do that for yourself. So we're going to go to the terminal here to get our default creds and we're going to do ls into this. We're going to go ahead and change directories into the Docker directory ls and then we're going to go into the config directory and then we're going to see a file right here called default creds.txt. We're going to go and cat that out and then right here we have username admin and password right here. So we're going to go ahead and copy that password, open back our browser, type in the username which is admin and paste that password in. We're going to go ahead and click log in. Once you guys actually get this started up for yourselves, make sure you guys set up a multi-factor authentication or 2FA. We're not going to do that for this tutorial, but I do highly recommend doing that for your instance. Now let's go ahead and start a server. So we're going to go ahead and click servers and create new server. You can either do it right here or right here. We're going to do it here. So let's go ahead and click create new server. This is going to come up and we're only going to pay attention to this box right here. Server type, we're going to do Minecraft servers. Which version we're going to do, uh, let's go ahead and do paper. And the server version 1.21.8 is the most recent Minecraft version as of uh, 8.27. So we're going to go ahead and select that server version and we're going to name it YouTube Tutorial 
server. And then uh, minimum memory, one gig is fine. Maximum, let's go ahead and change that to four. Server port is 25565. That is the default port for a Minecraft server on Java. And let's go ahead and click build server. So this should just take a couple of minutes. It's going to need to download that jar that we selected and then go ahead and boot the server up. I don't think it starts automatically. I think that's a setting you can set. So for us, it looks like it's up. So we're going to go into the server here and then we're going to go ahead and click start to actually build our server. We're going to get a prompt that says you must agree to the Minecraft EULA or EULA. We're going to go ahead and click yes and then the server should go ahead and start. Once the Minecraft server is up, you should be able to join it. So we are going to need to get our IP again. So if you don't have it copied, go back to your terminal and do IP space A. This will be our IP right here. You don't need to know the port 25565 if that's the port you set as Minecraft will automatically assume 25565. I'm going to go ahead and start up Minecraft and I will see you guys in the game. Okay, once we are in Minecraft, we want to go ahead and click multiplayer add server and then paste in that IP that we copied from the terminal and click done. And there we go. As you can see, zero out of 20, a Minecraft server. And let's go ahead and connect to that. And we are connected. So as you can see, we are in the world. Let's go ahead and run around a little bit. But yeah, you guys can go ahead and invite your friends. Uh, they can go ahead and join. If you're doing on like something that has 25565 open, uh, you will have to do port forwarding if you're hosting this on your local hardware, but that is pretty simple to do. And there's plenty of tutorials out there online on how to do that. So just, you know, look that up for your specific router. Now, last thing I do want to show you guys, we're going to go ahead and close Minecraft here and go to the web browser, managing multiple Minecraft servers. It is actually very easy to do using Crafty. If you guys just go to the dashboard, you're going to see your first server, but it's just as easy to make a second one. So we're gonna go ahead and click create new server, select a server, Minecraft servers, paper, why not? We're gonna call this second server and then go ahead and click build. As you can see, went ahead and build should import that jar pretty quickly and we can go ahead and start that server up it may not work because i do believe we have to set the port to a different one because we are using 25565 for the first one so let's go ahead and go to server port here and change that to a 25566 and click save go back to the terminal and then if we start this server up it should start with no issues there we go while that server starts we can actually go to our first server that we made and click player management as you can see it has a great UI to be able to see who's online. You can ban, kick, you can opt them straight from the terminal. If we click op here, open back Minecraft, as you can see, it went ahead and made my user an operator. And we can go ahead and do commands now like game mode creative. And you can do that straight from the uh, web UI. So back to the web browser, let's go ahead and check server properties and scroll down just a little bit. And server port says 25565 here. We're gonna change that to a six. Save that here on the server.properties. Go back to the terminal and let's go ahead and see if that fixed it. It looks like we have starting Minecraft server on 25566. So I bet you this server will start up, start up just fine. The second server is starting. So let's go back to our Minecraft, disconnect from the first server, let's click add server, put in that IP again, and this time put in our second port, which is 25566, and click done. There's our second server. And if we join, we should not be in creative and we should be in survival and not opt since we are on the second server. And just like that, we are on the second server. So as you can see, you can start up as much as your hardware can handle. I highly recommend going to, you know, normal Minecraft docs and researching what you should be able to support. But the more RAM, the more CPU, the better. And that is it. If you guys did enjoy, please let me know. If you guys have any questions, again, put them in the comments, put them in my Discord. I will answer the best of my ability and I would love to help you guys out. I hope you guys did enjoy and I will catch you guys in the next one and goodbye.